Hi guys, this is Paul here at uniquesquared.com and we're here today to talk to you about the Cuneo 3D Multi-Touch Controller by Keith McMillan Instruments. Uh, the Cuneo Multi-Touch Controller is very similar in design to the Novation Launchpad at first glance, but actually has a lot of other bells and whistles on offer. You'll notice that there's a series of lights on the corners of each of these pads, which is very different from the single light buttons that we grew used to with the Novation Launchpad. That's because each of these surfaces can actually do four independent functions in some uh, modes and presets. There's also a series of buttons that are very recognizable, a record, stop, and play type button. And then there's even the mode button that activates different modes on the multi-touch surface itself. Now, the preset that we are looking at right now is actually one that comes bundled with the Cuneo. Uh, it is an Ableton Live preset that is designed to have a clip launching mode and do a series of simple, uh, simple tasks to move around within the Ableton interface. The bottom arrows here actually affect the red box that you can see on the screen with the Cuneo in the Ableton Live interface here. And what that is is the selectable area that the Cuneo is controlling at any given point. So if you have this selected here and you decide you want to add six more tracks to your performance, then you can then move the red box dialog so that you can affect the area of control very simply and move rapidly throughout the performance and be able to do a lot of different things during a live set. What these surfaces down here do is they're all faders uh, in this mode. Now these can easily be assigned to any function that you like in some of the other modes, but here we actually have just a very simple up-down fader type control. The response is different than you would get from a traditional fader, but it can actually be used if you just rock your finger back and forth on the fader surface here you can actually get much more precise and tiny incremental changes versus the very big and clumsy swipes. So it's not quite what you would expect from it. It's much more touch sensitive than it is a traditional fader surface. Similarly, up here, we actually have a track selection button, which can take you all the way to the master fader, or you can go back to the very first, second, third, fourth, and fifth tracks. When this is engaged, instead of using the faders down here for the four that are selected, which would also be affected by moving the red box dialog, you can simply rock through the different channels here and then use this slider here to affect that fader that you've got selected. So I've got three, I've got four, etc. And then up here, this one actually affects the pan. So very quickly and easily, you can select what channel you want and then make changes in the panning. Let's move on to the clip section. If you go here, much like the launch pad, except for broken up over these four buttons, you actually have four clips selected. They correspond to the clips in the grid. So if you have four in a section, you'll see four lights that go down here. If you just have one, you'll just see the one light lit up. Moving down, you also have stop controls that are right here at the top of each button. So if you were to start this clip, you can just as quickly stop it here. Then you have a very simple on-off for the uh, track on-off buttons so that you can select things really quickly. And then you've also even got a solo feature that you can scoot through very quickly also by touching through the buttons. Finally, at the bottom, you have a record arm switch, which you are able to access just like you would on the launch pad controls, except for all on the same screen as your clip launching. One of the more interesting things that are available, and you've probably noticed them on the Cuneo and wondered, what are those things? Are these circular dials? What these allow you to do is very quickly and easily scroll around and scrub different sections of audio. So if you were looping, let's say, here and you wanted to change the affected length of that clip, you can just change the timing, which can lead to some happy accidents or could just be fun for wild and crazy performances and glitching out with, like so. And it looks cool, you know. So that's always a plus, especially for that drunk guy who's leaning over you while you perform, which is what we all love. One of the more interesting controls, of course, is the large ribbon controller here. And in the Ableton Live preset, this actually would control the crossfader in a traditional clip-based DJ set. However, for my purposes, I've actually tied it to the clip quantization for triggering up top so that if I wanted to really quickly switch over and be able to You get the idea. 
Important to note about the Keith McMillan Cuneo is that if you don't like what you have in, say, one of the presets, it's very easy to quickly use the Modes button and switch over and create your own preset. What I've built here is a very simple dialog for controlling some effects on the master bus, which I've, tie I've tied an auto filter here so you can sweep quickly through the frequency here. I've also set up an LFO control for that same auto filter so I can create very quick or if you want to do something simpler I've got a beat repeat and we've also got a reduction that I've put in here Everybody gets together, plays together, and you can just set up your favorite performances for a performance. Uh, you've got all your controls right then and there. But you get the idea. So what you have with the Keith McMillan Cuneo is a very versatile new sort of controller from Ableton that will allow you to do just about whatever you can think of. This is different from doing some kind of custom control mappings on an iPad or an iPhone because you get a much more tactile and rubberized surface. It's also velocity sensitive, so you can take advantage of programmable velocity curves and items like that for different sort of devices you might want to set up. And it just gives you some pre-built shapes so that rather than programming something virtual or plotting a space, you get to work within limitations. It's fun to play with. It's very, very tiny, lightweight, easy to grab, easy to pack in a bag, and would sit nicely alongside a launch pad. For some pe so for people who like a good rubberized control surface while they're performing, this is kind of the way to go. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's perfectly designed for those who like to dive into their gear and program it to do 80 different customizable things. Follow the link below this video to ask any questions you might have about the Cuneo in the related blogs and comments section. For the best price on the Cuneo, check out our website, you're watching uniquesquared.com.